So maybe you're ready to go ahead and ship some items to Amazon and you want to use Inventory Labs to do so. Well in this video I'm going to show you step by step on how to scan, list, price, pack, and ship all with Inventory Labs in this one amazing video. Let's get started. Hey guys, it's Lenny from Simon Says Resell, where I go ahead and share some videos on how to sell on Amazon, some how-to videos, some tips and tricks, and some other helpful videos to get you guys started on Amazon. So in this video, I'm pretty excited about because I heard a lot of people ask about it, and I'm very, very, very excited to get a, kind of put it together. It took a little time, and I apologize, but it's not as long as I don't, I don't think it is. I haven't really checked yet, but it's an amazing video to show you how to scan, price, pack, and ship with Inventory Labs from start to finish. And it'll go through all the steps um, to help you kind of give you an idea of what to expect. And maybe you're doing this already and you're really not sure what to do. So it is a pretty amazing video and I really want to get it put it together for you. So a couple quick things about it. Um, one, Inventory Labs isn't the only product you can do this with. There's Scan Lister, which I'm also testing. Um, and there are a few others. Um, the one thing that makes Inventory Labs so great in my opinion is not only can you scan and it has all the features and bells and bells and whistles you need but it also has um, the accounting part of it you can see your profit you can see your loss you can see which suppliers which sources do better than others as far as profitability it's an amazing product all around and their support is awesome too um, so definitely consider inventory labs there's a link to it on the bottom as well and you also find a bunch of my other supplies and tools and equipment that I use throughout this process. So if you're really serious about doing this on Amazon, and you, even if you don't even use Inventory Labs, you have everything you need there as far as how to get started. And definitely check out my other video where it kind of goes through each piece of equipment and tool and software that I use to do all this. So this is one of my first videos where I actually show you some of the, the grunt work that I do and have people do for me. But I really wanted to put this in a video for you because a lot of people ask for it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Inventory Labs. All right, guys. So before we get started, a few quick things. One is to, the first step really is to prep your books. You know, get any stickers off, any markings you can, get them ready to go. Um, I have my little setup here. I have my you know, USB scanner. Um, my Dymo my label printer here, um, computer, I have my um, mic here just when I sit down I'll be recording what I'm doing on the computer and uh, in the back here if you can see, um, not my T but you can see I have a USB hub there to kind of hook everything up so um, if you watch my supplies and equipment video a little while ago you notice that I use, I mentioned a lot of these things so so prep your books, get yourself set up in a little lab. This is my little corner office. Behind me is my main office, but I kind of wanted to separate things for now. On the left here, I have my books. So I already kind of prepped them. There's no stickers on them or anything. Um, so once you prep, then you sort. So sort them based on conditions. So on the left here, I have all my very goods, and on the right, I have my goods. Um, this is a very small listing example I'm doing. I usually have about 100 books to do at a time. Right now there's maybe about 12 or so, maybe 15, but I just wanted to show you really quick what to do. So you got your your area set up with all the equipment you need for now. Um, I have some boxes over there, which we'll get to later. Um, so I think I'm ready to go. Computer, printer, USB scanner, um, books, ready to go. So let's go ahead and dive into Inventory Lab. Okay, so we're in Inventory Lab now. Um, one of the first things you'll probably see when you log in is this little uh, open batches page. So a batch is what you're gonna be creating to basically list all your, your books or your items. So you have to create a new batch first in order to move on and start listing and scanning books, for example. So you know, keep in mind, I primarily scan and sell books. So I'm going to say books a lot during this video and just keep that in mind, but if you're selling anything really this, this works pretty much the same way. So the first thing you do, like I said, you jump into a new batch. Um, it opens up this new batch page. Um, I put this little thing here because there, there's an address coming up I don't want you guys to see. If you happen to see it, just ignore it, look away, but I, I do my best here <laughs> to hide it. So when you create a new batch, you're going to have a batch name. It has to be unique. So um, I usually leave it just the way it is because usually a time and date is unique uh, for the most part. Um, include buy list CSV. If you have any CSV files that you want to upload um, to import into this new batch process, 
you can hear. I don't know too much about this. It's new. I don't use it. So, um, but there it is. You can click on what is that for if you wanted to. Uh, the one thing about Inventory Lab is very cool. It's it's cloud based, meaning I don't have to install this program or anything Inventory Lab related to my machine, my computer. Everything's cloud based. So what that means is Inventory Lab can update things whenever they like. Uh, for example, some of these options here were not here a little while ago because every time Amazon themselves make a change, Inventory Lab does a great job in updating um, on their side. So sellers like us can have all the latest and greatest features and, and functionality as if you were to do it through Inventory or sorry through Amazon Seller Central. So I'm going to go down this list a little more. Uh, packing type individual products because I'm selling books. Otherwise, you would they have um, um, things that are packaged together, like combined packages. Channel. You want to make sure you're doing FBA if you're FBA. Otherwise, it would be merchant. Uh, but I'm doing FBA. Uh, workflow type is live. Um, the other one is uh, private. So the thing with live is as soon as I submit a my first listing, a little pop up will come up, kind of letting me know, hey, the shipment you'll be sending in is going to this Amazon fulfillment warehouse. Do you accept? So you usually say okay, and you move on. So what that live does, it kind of sets your distribution center up from the beginning. Otherwise, it'll kind of change it up on uh, at the end uh, for the most part. So I've been doing live since I started, and it's worked out very well for me. Uh, label preference. So label preference is basically, you know, do I want to put my labels on my books, or do I want Amazon to do it? So if you guys remember from other videos, uh, Amazon charges about twenty cents a book or an item to label. So I would just do it yourself. And I have my Dymo label here on, on the left that I'll show you guys later. As soon as every time I submit a book to scan or to list, it spits out a label for that individual book, which works very well. Um, provide box content. So Amazon requires when you ship stuff into them that you have some sort of box content list. So if you have four boxes, you have a way to kind of show them what each content of the box is or are. For example, if you have 20 books in the box, what are the books? names, ISBN numbers, stuff like that. So the great thing about Inventory Labs, it takes care of that for you automatically. Um, very cool stuff. Shipping method, small parcel. Otherwise, you would have the um, <clears throat> the other one, LTEL or something like that. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm ready to go ahead and hit Create really quick. So when you do that, you'll get a little live workflow warning letting you know that um, to make sure you pay attention to that. Uh, any combined products um, need to be sent a certain way. I kind of ignore this because I don't really have to deal with it. But just hit close, and now it's set up my batch. So there's my batch, there's live FBA, um, and I'm good to go. So on the very top right, you want to make sure that your Amazon catalog is selected. Usually it is, um, because as you scan books, as you type ISBN numbers, you want to make sure that's the catalog you have selected because that looks at Amazon's catalog. You know, the 63 million or so books, for example, they have in their catalog. The static MSQ prefix. So before you scan something, you can come into here and edit the prefix. So I usually do this based on how I source my book. So if I get it from a person like, for example, Linda or Goodwill or another thrift store or a yard sale, I'll just put some sort of prefix here and what's going to happen is every time I scan a book it's going to add increment a number by one so it kind of automatically creates the MSQ for you now this MSQ is or this MSQ is your merchant SKU number so customers will not see this this will not be published on the Amazon Seller Central store so this is all you um, what I like about this is when a book sells I'm able to see where it's sourced from pretty quickly because when you're when you look at your Amazon Seller Central app, for example, when you're excited when orders come in, you'll see this little MSQ. So you kind of have an idea right away where you got the book from, uh, just kind of as an FYI. So I'm going to hit save because these books are from Linda. And now I'm ready to go. So I have my USB scanner on the left here. I'm going to scan my book, the barcode in the back. Let me make sure I hit the little text box there. All right, so thinking visually, um, we got the title. You can actually open this up in a new tab, and sometimes I do this because I want to make sure that there isn't another hard copy or paperback that it's confused with. So a lot of times is when books have different formats like paperback, hard copy, 
usually inventory labs is really good at picking the right one um, sometimes it can happen where you scan a paperback but it actually comes up as a hardcover uh, and then you put it online you sell it someone buys it and they get they don't get what they asked for so just you don't have to look at this every time I just sometimes do just wanted to show you so this is obviously a paperback book which is correct there's a rank a little over a million um, reminder reminder message don't really need to do that for books tax code I have a uh, general books one quantity cost me a dollar so this is the cost per unit so you can click this button and just put your cost here so if it cost you two dollars put two dollars um, and then hit OK um, any dates you want to put for purchase I don't really care so much about that so I leave it alone my supplier so this is different than your M SKU, but I usually make them the same when I list items so the supplier this is more of a inventory labs um, option so what this does is if you go to accounting sorry if you go to reports you have your supplier profitability this is a great tool to show you a breakdown of all your suppliers that you've got your books from for example and how many sales you got from each one so over time you can kind of get idea of which suppliers are the most profitable for example so I usually keep this the same as my MSKU and here's my MSKU remember I put Linda in before it automatically added an increment number of uh, one so now I'm on 148 uh, condition for this book is very good and I have other conditions here I have a pre-populated condition note um, some minor shelfware otherwise very close to like new condition pages are crisp and bright no highlighting marking or writing ships directly from Amazon delivery tracking number no hassle return policy your satisfaction is guaranteed so you can copy that if you want that's what I have um, and that works out very well so on the right here you have the offers the original retail price and this nice little breakdown of columns now for those that use FBA scan or profit bandit or whatever else a third-party app you'll notice that it looks very similar uh, the first two columns, new and used, those are merchant new and used prices. And FBA is coming up with nothing. Now, keep in mind with these apps and these programs that do this stuff that have an API or a kind of a direct connection to Amazon, not all the information from FBA is populated within those apps. For example, here, I know for a fact that there is one other seller selling this same book as FBA. And we'll see that in a second. So don't think that there aren't any FBAs here. I'll show you what I usually do off right off the bat here but just want to kind of show you some other great features here if you see a little O next to any of the prices that means it's the buy box if you see an A that's Amazon is the merchant and try to undercut them so you have a bunch of apps here you have book scouter eBay Google camel 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 Keepa, prime comparison and Amazon product search so since I'm an FBA person I always choose prime comparison what this does this opens up another tab right into Amazon and automatically selects all the prime um, books for this specific listing so on Amazon there's one other FBA person selling this book and I know that by a little prime logo here so they're selling it for $35.91 um, and that's great so what I'm doing is I'm kinda getting an idea of what the average price is to kinda give me an idea of how I want to price it now those of you might be thinking do I do this for every book and I, I, I have been for the past few months and it's been working out pretty well it does take me about a minute or so to list a book which is okay in my my, my eyes but I also am testing out um, ScanLister which is a little bit more efficient as far as time goes and even money in the long run but what that does is it just scans books and you set a price and then you list them and then you use a program like reprice it like I did a video on before to kind of see those books you already listed and automatically reprice them to a decent um, competitive price. So, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually touching every single book and looking at the prices and the comparisons and the average for every single book at first. So, what I'm going to do is look at the price. So it's 35.91. The rank is 1.1 million. What I want to do is I want to undercut him and I want this to sell a little quicker and I can care less about the few dollars that I could make if I was closer to him. So I'm going to put this book as for $29.99. So that's definitely under this person and it'll probably sell sooner for the most part. It's the same condition, right? Very good, yeah. So I'm going to put it for $29.99. What this net profit is, so I'll make $20 net profit if it sells. Now what this takes into account, which is awesome about this program, it takes into account the shipping I forgot to mention the shipping before so this is my cost per pound for shipping to 
on average, really. So I usually ship to the Fort Washington um, distribution center. I think it's in Texas. So that's usually what it costs me to ship. Um, but for this specific book, it's about 12 cents or so. So this net profit takes into account all the listing fees for Amazon FBA, the shipping fees, and the cost per unit, the cost per goods sold. So after everything, this is the amount of money I should get. And it's very, very close to being accurate. Uh, so that's a great idea to kind of know that. So actually, I can play around with this eventually. You, you might see me do this with other books. I can play around with this and get to a net profit that I'm comfortable with if I'm not comfortable with the listing price and the profit. So you have your net profit here automatically and you have your return uh, right there. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I kind of want to show you this in real time. I'm going to open up my, my camera on my phone and I'm going to videotape. As I press submit, what happens is every time you submit a book, it spits out a label for the book. And I'll just put the book on the label. So let's do that right now. So I'm filming my Dymo printer as I do this, and here we go. I'm happy with everything now. I got my price, got my condition notes. I'm good. So let's do this. And before that happens, so when I hit submit, it's going to warn me, let me know that this is the fulfillment center that I have had to ship my books to, or at least this book for to start. And all you really do is you hit accept. And then when I do that, it's going to spit out a label. There you go, there's my label for that book. And I rip it off. And I have my book here. It's kind of tight, but I'll show you guys what to do. Here's my label, right here, and see if we get a better zoom in. Yeah, there you go. So there's my label. So I'm going to take off the label. A lot of people have asked me, you know, where do I put the label? Well, you actually put it over the existing label on the book. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to put that right on there, and I'm good to go. So that's my label. So this book is, is ready to go. So now I have my first book listed. As you can see, I have some information about it. Um, the title, the label, where it's going, stuff like that. Now if you notice here on the bottom, which is very cool, which one of the great things I love about this program, is I have all my information as far as you know the buy cost, the profit, stuff like that. So I have one item with the average sales rank of only one, obviously. The total sales value, that's the listing price, the buy cost, and the net profit. So right now, I'll be making $20.16, which I'm happy with. <laughs> Let me get the next book. I'll scan a few books just to kind of give you an idea of how to do this. You know, Repetition is going to be the best thing when you guys are starting off. Just kind of keep doing it, get used to it, and you should be okay. So this next book here, Today I Will, um, rank of about 700, just under 700,000. Uh, my task skill is good, quantity one. CPU is good, um, supplier, M SKU is good, condition is very good, awesome. Now you see on the right that I have a bunch of uh, FBA stuff here. Um, that could be all of them that are there. There may be more. So if I go ahead and go to my little prime button here, um, yeah, it's pretty good. There's only about five or so. Um, so what I'm going to do, because a lot of people ask me about how I list, how I price. Um, one thing they see if see if first there's any Amazon listings. There's one here. Amazon is selling the book for 1286 new, so you definitely want to go under that. Um, cheapest one is 890, which is good. Okay. So what I usually do, I kind of average it out. So I don't use a calculator or anything. I just kind of you know wing it basically. So I'll be comfortable selling this book for about 995. Um, you now if you're like, well, how much money will I get in return and net profit for that? All you do is you go here, you go 9.95, and it's about a little over three dollars. Some people might be okay with three dollars. Some people might want more. Some people might say this isn't worth it. It really is up to your business model, and you know how many books you have to sell. So I'm okay with three dollars for this because I wanted to sell 
fairly quickly. Um, so I'm going to keep it at that, and that's pretty much it for this book. There's nothing else I got to do because I kept the condition the same, and that's why it's so important to sort your books beforehand. So you don't have to worry, keep flipping back between good, very good, like new, stuff like that. So um, I hit submit and save. You'll hear my printer. There you go. <laughs> Took a little longer, but there it is. So I'll rip off the uh, sticker here, pick up the book. I know you can't see this, but I'm doing it. Um, put the label on the back of the book, over the barcode, and I'm done. Let's do one more book. One more book is an example, and then I'll kind of finish this for you guys. And notice on the bottom how my numbers changed. My average sales rank went down a little bit. Total sales value, $39. Total buy cost, 2 bucks. Net profit, $23. So on two books, I got 23 bucks so far. Not terrible. Scan my other book here. This one's a heavy book, a little heavier, so it's about a little under 200,000 rank, which is pretty good. Uh, only 30 other offers, and I'm looking at the top right here. So that's important to look at. The book before that had about 50 or so offers, which is a little high maybe, um, but just so you know, that's what the offers are. The more offers, the more competition you have, which may, may mean the longer it may take for the book to sell. That's why you may have to think about pricing and stuff like that. So. Tax code's good, quantity's good, cost is good. See, there's my shipping now. A little more expensive, as you notice. My first book I did was 12 cents to ship. This one's about $1.26. Um, my SKU looks good, very good as well. Um, and now I look at the FBA, so I'm clicking on my little Prime button here. So there's only two other offers new for $23.97, and one of them is awesome Amazon. So what I'm going to do. You might be asking, well, there's 30 offers, why is there only two primes? Well, there's 30 offers total. So if I click on this one, no, this one, no, oh, I'm stuck in like the prime world right now. So um, let me see, let me take this, see if this works. No, that doesn't work. How do I get there? Hold on. Um, da, 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 da. Let's clear all for now. Let's go to used. So there's all the used ones. Um, merchant, as you can see, there's a bunch there. So I really don't look too much at the F the the merchant stuff when I list for the most part. So I'm gonna ignore it. So let me go back to my Prime page here. So two for twenty three ninety seven or so. So I'm going to sell this for $19. I usually undercut the best I can. Yeah, some, some people might say, well, the sales rank is very low. That means it'll sell pretty quickly. Um, let me show you guys Camel, Camel, Camel while we're here. So I'm going to pivot into Camel, Camel, Camel. Um, here's the book. Scroll down to sales rank. And I do use this a lot, too, especially when I'm kind of stuck in between you know, how much I want to sell the book for. Um, let me see if my login is there. Da, 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 da. Let's see if that works. All right, cool. That worked. So let me put this down to a month. So in the past, I haven't really sold anything in a month. So in the past, and there's pretty much with Camel, 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 you look at all the peaks, all the plateaus. So there's one. Two, three, four. So about four in three months. So maybe one a month, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. So what I was determining before is the the sales rank looks pretty low. So why wouldn't I put a little higher the list price and just deal with that? Well, I could, but I'm gonna leave it 19.99 because I want to undercut Amazon obviously and there's no one else really selling this prime under Amazon except for this guy selling it over Amazon which you know good luck with that um, but I'm really here to get these books sold not to sit here forever and and acquire storage fees so I'm going to set this for 1999 everything else looks good I hit save submit you'll hear my printer in a second waiting for it. There we go. 
There's my printer. Rip off the sticker. Put it on the barcode in the back of the book, and I'm done. So three books down, a couple more to go. So just a kind of little recap here. We've scanned and listed three books. Total profit is 31 bucks. Buy cost three bucks, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna scan the rest of these books really quick, and then I will be back. I went ahead and scanned a few more books here. Uh, at the bottom, you can kind of see where I wind it up. Um, 13 books, average sales rank 684. Total sales value uh, $246.55. Total buy cost 13 bucks, and total net profit 118 dollars. So 13 books and about $118 in my pocket. And again, the 118 is after all the fees, shipping, cost of books sold, everything. So not too bad. Um, so at this point, what we're, we're going to do, since we're ready to pretty much pack the books, uh, we are going to go on the bottom here and choose Scan to Pack. Um, the cool thing is about this, they changed it up a little bit. Um, here's my 13 books or so. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, it's 13. Um, <clears throat> what I can do, I only have one box, since I'm only going to put this in one box, so it makes it a lot easier. Um, kind of gives you boxes to the the area you're going to. Um, so, for example, Fort Washington, I believe. You want to hit New Box, so you create your first box. And then you have this little Start button here. Um, I'm going to pivot over to me showing you kind of how I set up the boxes real quick um, and then I'll start scanning these in and putting these in the box so I'll be right back alright so we have the box here here is my tape gun works like a charm um, obviously just pick the right side so this is top flip it over here Two sides down, put this like that. So it makes it easy with the tape gun. You don't have to use your teeth or worry about things falling over the place. So let me just spin around here for a second. So what I usually do is I um, pull out a little bit. It's gonna be a little loud, so just bear with me here. Um, start it off there. That's one. I usually put a couple pieces like that. So three pieces like that. And I actually do tape the sides a bit. Fold it up. And I usually have to pull the tape out a little bit just so I get the length right. There we go. Bottom is taped. All right, you go to scan to pack. And I have my box here. If you don't have a box here at all, just hit new box and it'll come up. Now let's say you have multiple boxes. Well, what you do is you scan the books, which I'm about to do, and you can put them in the box. And as you scan them, if you run out of room in your box, just hit new box. And it creates a new box and you start scanning them in there. So that's the great little feature of this scan to pack is this is your box content. So remember on the very beginning it asked for box content? Well this is what you're doing at this step which is super easy. Now what I'm also doing which you can't see right this second is um, I know the books I have the 13 are way under 50 pounds and the box I'm going to use is way too big for these 13 books because I don't have a smaller box right now. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So the box that I'll show you when, it, when all the books are in there, it'll have a lot more room in it. So I'm just going to put some draft paper in there to fill it up. But as you're scanning your books into the box, put your box on top of the scale. So you can kind of keep track of, as you're putting books in there, you know, make sure you're not going over 50 pounds. So I just keep putting box books in. I keep putting books in the box until um, either I get to 50 pounds or just below that or I run out of room and then when I hit that cap one of those two caps or those limits I hit new box and I just start scanning into that box so very simple just think about it as you're itemizing what's in the boxes so as you run out of room in the box or if the box gets too heavy hit new box and just start scanning those those of those books in those boxes so I have my one box I'm gonna click this little info thing 
it's going to have start. So what this is doing, it's listening. It's listening for my USB scanner on my desk. So what I'm going to do is I'm scanning the back of the book that I already put a label on. Remember we put the labels on each book? So I have my label on the back. So if I scan it, it makes a very loud noise, but I'm going to turn the volume down. If I scan it, um, it puts that book in there, Linda 161. That's the book I just put in. So I'm going to keep going here all the way down should have 13 when I'm done here cut more now again I'm scanning the barcode the label that I put on top of the original barcode it knows what it is because it's in the system right now Alright, so I'm done. So I just scanned my 13 books. I'm going to hit finish and then close. So now I've created box content for those. Now, what you could do is you could come over here to the left and go to box content info, and you'll see these are all my books. These are the box number. This FBA da -da -da, 01, that's the box. If I had another box, I would call it 02, and so on and so forth. You actually can create a new box here as well and start scanning those into the particular box. You notice there's a box with a 01, there's a 13, those are 13 books as you can see here. So I'm pretty much done with my books. Um, what I can do is I can send updated boxes. This stuff goes to Amazon. There we go, it's sent successfully. I can come back to my little batch order here um, and I can hit review batch go ahead and send my box feeds All right. so now what happens is I went ahead and my batch is closed remember we opened up a batch a while ago well that batch is closed and now I have this guy down here uh, I can go back to my box content and everything's good there um, so I'm done with inventory labs for the most part. I do have to jump into my Amazon seller account which I will in a second. I'll just close inventory labs there. Let me just log back in real quick. Alright. Let me log back in there. Move this over. Okay. So I do have to log into my Amazon seller account um, to look at my shipments really quick. So as you see, when I pull up my shipments in Amazon Seller account, um, I'll have my one there. And now you see there's 13 items. Very good. Uh, and again, I didn't create this shipment in, in Seller Central yet. You'll see. Um, because everything was created in Inventory Labs during the batch process. So at this point, um, I think I'm good. Let me just double check my boss content here. Okay, so things are good. One thing to check, if you go to list and Amazon listing errors, you'll see something pop up if something does happen, but just go to Amazon listing errors um, when you're done with this step to see if anything's there. So I'm pretty much done with my batch. I'm done with that. Now what I can do, here's the fun part. Now at this point, two things I can do. It doesn't matter what order I do them in. I can come here. Yeah, actually this is a good step. Let's go to work on shipment and if I go here you'll see all my books. should be 13 or so. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep, 13 books. Um, I choose small parcel, UPS, and let's see, there's one box. I already have one box. So let's say you have five boxes. You just hit five, hit set number of boxes, and then five of these will come up. So my weight, I don't know my weight yet. So what I'm going to do is let me cut over to the other video real quick and show you uh, what my weight is. Bear with me there. 
All right, so at this point, I can go ahead and start packing up my box. Um, what I usually do is I, these are all good or very good, so I'll put some of the bigger books kind of at the bottom um, with the spine. You can guys can see that with the spine against the side. Again, it's not common sense. They don't have to be in any special order. Usually I put maybe the bigger books at the bottom just to have some sort of stability. Um, but I'll go ahead and just fill these up. I don't know if you can see everything I'm doing now, but you will in a second. And again, there's no you know, special way to do this. I mean, yeah, you can get creative and only put certain books in certain places, but um, so I'm pretty much done. You can see, those are my books. I can put them a different way, but you know, that's kind of how it is right now. Um, but just to get an idea, I usually put the bigger books at the bottom. If you have a different assortment of books, like um, like new, very good, good, you probably want to put the not so good ones on the outside, just in case they do get dinged or damaged. But that's kind of that's kind of it. Um, now, what do I do to fill this up? So I have this draft paper here. Um, what I do is I just kind of rip off a couple chunks. books are good now. So at this point, I've packed my books, I've put them in here, put the drafting paper in, and we need to know how much this box weighs. I know that this box and the books don't weigh over 50 pounds, but what I do is, I mentioned this before, here's my scale by the way, let me bring it over here, uh, here's my scale, and my scale has a little LCD screen here, you probably can't see it from where you are, but that's kind of where it is. Let me just make sure it's set up correctly. Okay. So what I'm going to do is you put the box on the scale, like so. Um, I don't know if you can see it from all the way over there, but it's 18, I'd say 19 pounds, let's say. So now I know how much my box weighs. And when you fill out the seller account and the work of shipment part, it's going to ask you the dimensions. On this box, it makes it easy because the dimensions are here, 16 by 12 by 12. So we're going to cut back to the other video, and I'll show you where to put this information. So I got the weight, I got the dimensions, now I can go ahead and put that stuff in there. Alright, so the weight was 19 pounds, box dimensions 16 by 12 by 12. And we're going to calculate. So it's going to cost me $9.45 to ship this. So go ahead and accept the charges. Hit OK. Now you may be wondering, how does it charge me? Well, it takes it out of your balance for Amazon. So you don't need a credit card number or anything. This all comes out of your fees already. So once you accept the charges, you go ahead and print the labels. Now. If you guys remember from a few videos ago of mine where I talked about shipment or um, equipment and things like that, the labels I'm printing on, the shipping labels I'm printing on, I get for free from UPS. So all you do is you set up a UPS account, it's free online, you go to shipping supplies and you kind of drill down into the, the shipping label section and you'll find shipping labels um, there and actually there's other stuff that's free. but. For me, I only need the shipping stuff, the labels themselves. So they send you 50 sheets of labels with two shipping labels on a piece. When you ship them out to Amazon, you're going to need to, you need two labels. One label is for the Amazon stuff, one label is for UPS, and I'll show you guys that in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this. comes out here. So here's my shipping label stuff right there. Um, I'm going to print that and I'm going to stick it on the box, so be right back. Alright, so we just printed out our shipping labels, and here they are. So you see there's two of them on here. Um, this, this is considered one sheet of paper, obviously, but you can get 50 of these for free from UPS.com. So it prints out the Amazon FBA stuff and the UPS stuff. So let's go ahead and tape up our box. Close it up. So I 
don't put tape on the corners on the top. Something I don't do. Um, but here you go. So we got our box. We got our labels. So what I usually do is start with um, my left. It probably looks opposite from where you are, but it really doesn't matter what side you put these on. So you put the bo labels on the box like this. You've probably seen this in other videos. Make sure you don't put the label that way because when Amazon opens up the boxes, they'll take a knife, you know, and they'll cut the center. And you don't want them to cut the, the label itself. So these boxes are perfect. I buy these in bulk. Um, I just put this on both sides. Both sides like this. And there we go. I could put them this way too if I wanted to, but um, I, they, they fit fine on this side. So Amazon just takes the little knife, cuts it down the middle, and they won't rip the labels. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. We got the books in the box. Their shipping's paid for. We put the books in there, taped it up. Um, we're just about done. All right. So we just packed up our box, put the label on, and just go ahead and complete shipment here. Now, if you go back to Inventory Labs, you may wonder, hey, why is this still here? When you hit sync, it just kind of syncs a few things up. You may wonder why that's there. Um, not a big deal. What you do is when you hit mark as shipped on the Amazon seller central account then hit sync this will disappear so I'll do that now marked as shipped come back here hit syncs gone so now guess what now we're back to the beginning we're back to where we first started when I had no batches open I had no shipments there so we pretty much went through the entire process to scan list pack and ship uh, a bunch of books to amazon fba congratulations awesome job well there you go congratulations you just walked through the entire process from start to finish and how to scan list price pack and ship books with amazon um so hopefully that answers a lot of your questions and I'm, again i'm really excited about this video because i think you guys will like it um definitely leave your comments and stuff like that as well um it it didn't take me that long to do all this, um, especially list of books. I did take a break in between just because I had some you know, personal things to deal with, but I only used 13 books. Um, I could have done a lot more. I usually do up to you know, maybe 100 in a sitting. Now, one thing to mention, and I do mention this a few times, is in the very beginning, when you submit your first book, it shows you what distribution center it's going to. And in my case, it's going to Fort Washington. Um, if you start scanning books, let's say I started scanning Fort Washington, and then I come back, I don't finish it. I, I scan maybe five books, for example. I come back two hours or maybe a half a day later and I scan more books in the same batch. It might change the distribution center on me, which is a pain in the butt because you have to do shipments based on those different shipping centers. Um, it may sound complicated. I haven't had that experience yet in a while because what I do to hopefully avoid it is if I have books to ship and to list and to scan and all that with Inventory Labs, I do it within that one sitting and I usually get lucky meaning I don't have other distribution centers to send it out for example on a listing or, or shipment a, a while ago it said to ship these 50 books to New Jersey it said to ship these three books somewhere in California it said to ship these eight books to some other location in New Jersey and it, I winded up doing eight different shipments to different places and it was extremely annoying I'm like there's got to be a better way to do this there is a fee you can pay Amazon, so they don't do that to you, but it's costly, and if you kind of do it right, maybe, uh, maybe I've gotten lucky. So if you're thinking about doing shipments, uh, you're thinking about shipping books with Inventory Labs at least, pick out, carve out some time that you have to do it. You know, maybe it's an hour or two. Um, carve out that hour or two and just focus on that and focus on shipping books out with inventory labs. Don't break them up. Try not to break them up because you could run the risk of them splitting those up on you and it's really annoying. So again, I really hope you liked this video. Go ahead and leave some comments. Smash that like button if you enjoyed it and please, please, please subscribe to the channel so you get notified when more videos come out because I do have a lot more coming out. All right. So again, I hope you like this and you guys have an awesome day.